something, boy. But she's helped us a lot. She lied. Some people value their privacy. Best not to judge, brother. When I require your counsel, Head, I will ask. Fair enough. Get me to Tyr's Temple in the Lake of the Nine, and I'll get you to Jotunheim as promised. We know the temple. What's there? Only the last living giant in Midgard. Who better to tell us the way? So, Mimir, why did Freya spin your face? No. Speak of Balder. He claims nothing harms him. Aye. Balder is blessed with invulnerability to all threats, physical or magical. Boasting of a god. Everyone has a weakness. Not him, I'm afraid. Balder is blessed with invulnerability to all threats, physical or magical. You just said that, Mimir. Did I? What is the source of this power? Well, as I recall, it involved, uh... A spell? Mamir? Parts of my brain must still be coming back to life. Just need a moment to finish waking up. Hope he's not broken. Mamir, we're on the lake. Perfect. Dock us near the bridge. You never did tell me why Freya spit in your face. Enough. No stories. Not while on foot. Our focus is the road. Ed, how do we speak to the serpent? There's a horn on a platform at the middle point of the bridge. Take me to it. Finally! That horn! Good. Now put my lips to the horn. That statue made in honor of Thor, and seen as the world serpent absolutely abhors the fat dauber. He was probably sick of looking at it. He knows the pain of your loss. He will help you. Curious. What is it? Oh, nothing to be concerned about. What is he doing? Making sure we're headed in the right direction. Listen closely now. We need two things to get us into the land of the giants. First, we need to learn the travel rune that opens realm travel to Jotunheim. Second, we need to carve that rune into the special gateway. Is that one of the people we first met you? Correct. Except the giants, in their infinite wisdom, saw to it that no ordinary chisel would do the job. Only the tip of a magical chisel opens that gate. Luckily, I know where it is. And it's not far. He looked kind of mad for a moment there. Now that, he thought I said you were friends of Odin. You'll forgive me. I've never spoken the ancient tongue sober. Wait, look! The water's dropped even further. You can see more of the realm towers and statues. I haven't seen new places to explore along the shore. Where is this chisel? Find me a boat, and we'll go from there. I don't think we should disturb Jormungandr without some reason.
way to the chisel. Keep rowing towards the statues of the oarsmen, then thread past between them. Amir, you never did tell me why Freya spit in your face. Well, she blames me in large measure for her present circumstances. I'm not totally without reason. It all goes back to the long war between the Aesir and Vanir. Prior to that, wars for the Aesir were easily won. But the Vanir had proved their equal and exacted devastating damage. Both sides suffered tremendous losses. And for many of us, quite frankly, war was simply no fun anymore. But a rather senseless waste of precious life. Or I can just tell you this story later. story before. What were you saying about the Long War? Enough was enough, and at last Odin's most brilliant advisor became determined to find a more enlightened path. He set about to broker a peace between the gods. It took some convincing, but ultimately Odin was persuaded to marry his deadliest enemy, a certain Vanir goddess, legendary not only for her fertile beauty, but her genius at the very Vanir magic that Odin had long aspired to master. Freya married Odin? What was in it for her? It was a sacrifice to protect her people. A selfless act of love. <laughs> she deserves better than she got. But of course, there's more to that story. Scare up that alchemist what needed finding? Oh, almost forgot. Brock, this is our new friend Mimir. We've, We've met. met. Oh, why didn't you say so? He, he knows, knows why. why. I know why. You know why. Quiet. No more of this. I see. Just wanted to stare into my eyes. What does it say? Uh... So, Brock said his friend was dwarven. I can't. Alchemist for something. Wearing a Look if you wish. I will gather resources for our journey. You don't want to help him? No. Why not? Because I do not run errand. Dwarven. For no ring. One of his crew? Scorch marks. There, along the floor of the wall. Weird. I guess we keep looking. We? I mean, I'll keep looking. Some more dangerous than that. 
Then do not drop your guard. Come. We're not going to find Brock's friend alive, are we? Boy, over here. Yes, sir. Attached to the Soul Eater. Well, we know what happened to Invari now. We can just go tell Brock. No need to fight it, right? No, we will fight it. But why? Because you are frightened of it.
strong, Atreus. Stay focused and look for a weak point. Yes, sir. Stay quiet. Make no sudden movement. Inscription. The alchemist. But where's the rest of it? Ash is most likely. The soul leader got him. I guess we should bring this back to Brock. What does it say? Yes, sir. These runes were written fast. It spells out Eugene Staney. I don't know that one. We will ask the blue one. So now you're interested? We found his alchemist. A reward was promised.
Would you? As interested as I thought. Oh, there. Got another favor to ask you two. Boy. I can't believe Odin and Frey were ever married. Love and hate are more closely intertwined than you might imagine. For instance, Odin hates the giants and they him. But Thor's own mother was the giantess Fjorgun, one of Odin's great loves. So Thor's half god and half giant? Where? Once Fjorgun was gone, lonely ages passed for Odin. And as war with the Vanir raged, I could see what he really wanted beneath his bluster. And after no small amount of convincing, they are agreed. For a while there, he really turned on the charm. He seemed happy. He seemed interested in making her happy. He granted us so many wishes, I can scarcely recall them all. The peace held, and I truly believed all had worked out better than I could have planned. But Odin's true face showed itself again in the end. He won Freya's trust, and she taught him some of her Vanir magic, another choice she would live to bitterly regret. And we'll pick this up later. Good! Keep it up! Here, boy. Sir. Another map, great. Found anything good in Fafnir's storeroom? Like, maybe... You're wrong, of course.
so Odin and Freya could have been happy. But he only wanted her magic? Aye. Sadly, despite his wise counselor's best efforts to persuade him that peace was the only true path to stave off Ragnarok, Odin never let go of his obsession with Jotunheim. The taste of Vanir magic led him to new forms of experimentation and new levels of depravity. among the living. My beloved Gulvig calls to me. She yearns for peace, yet her remains lie in pieces. I beg of you, make my Gulvig whole again. You want us to collect her bones? Gulvig's sather magic knows no bounds. She can reunite you with those you've lost. Really? How? Boy, I can smell your grief, child. Rest assured, her magic is strong enough to create bridges between life and death, if only for a short while. Boy, we are leaving. They've taken three of Sweet Gulvig's bones and spread them across the lake. Bring me her bones, child. Gulvig will reward... Ah, good. The special chisel is ahead past this gate. be distracted by this fool's errand. This chisel we seek, what is it? I'm glad you asked, actually. I have just the story for you. Ahem. There was a giant once named Thamu. A very giant giant. Who, despite his mountainous size, was without question the greatest stonemason this world had ever seen. Proud Thamu hoped to one day pass his vast knowledge onto his son. But young Hrimthur had the heart of a warrior. Perhaps the father had too much fear in him, or the son too little. Either way, a quarrel of theirs spiraled out of control, and the overworked stonemason oh, struck his son. Arimthur ran off into the night. Feeling shame and regret, Famur chased after his son, but in his emotional state soon found himself wandering Midgard, lost and alone. Sadly, he caught the eye of the one person he didn't want to meet alone that night, so far from home. And what happened next? You'll see. Four children. Oh no. You fell in the village? Aye. 
When Thamar fell, he crushed a charming place famed for worshipping the Vanir god Njord. Thor always took credit for planning that one. The truth is, the sweaty claw bag just got lucky. Are we attacking? A wolver! A dangerous beast. We will take him down together. Tip of one, yes. A very, very giant chisel. Magically sealed, I'm afraid. Thamur was a frost giant. When he died, his final breath froze everything. <laughs> Follow me, Atreus. Find the tip of that chisel. That's the magic we need. Hostiles. On your mark.
don't treat that. Hi, Sandy. Can you read it? Yes. An Alfheim light crystal. Wonder what it's for. To Njord, we offer back the seas back. Ah, yes. It was believed that Njord calmed the winds and seas for the fishermen. For that, they loved and worshipped him here. Luma! That did it! Thank you.